Okay, welcome back. In this video, I will be explaining um, in a little bit more details why we settle with um, 602 billion trillion for a mole. Why don't we use a million? Why don't we use a billion? Why do we settle for that really peculiar number? So that's basically 0.8.5. So this is a question, why 6.02 times 10 to 23 atoms? And the reason is if because of mass. So if you recall, the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12.00. We use this as the, um, the basis for um, calculating relative isotopic mass. And then from there, you can calculate the relative atomic mass. The, the interesting thing is if you want exactly 12 grams of carbon, so this is just this is just carbon, this is carbon here. If you want exactly 12 grams of carbon, there are 602 billion trillion atoms of carbon in 12 grams of carbon. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23 is the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon atoms. So the mass of one mole of carbon atom, because one mole of carbon atom is this many carbon atoms, the mass of one mole of carbon atoms is the same as the relative atomic mass of carbon. So in both cases, the number is 12.00. However, one mole of carbon atoms can be measured on a regular scale. So it, it can be measured in grams. So if the relative ma atomic mass of carbon is 12, the mass of one mole of carbon atoms is 12 grams. So this is this is why we settle for this particular number. So that when you have these many atoms of carbon, you will have the same mass as the relative atomic mass, but measured in grams, which is something that you can put on a scale. So just to um, reiterate that point, the mass of one mole of atoms of an element is the same as the relative atomic mass of that element. And this is why we need to pick this number. If I pick a billion trillion, um, the relative atomic mass and the mass of that many atoms will not match. So I would have to create a whole new um, set of measurement to record the mass of a billion trillion atoms. However, if you stick with 6.02 times 10 to 23, then the mass of the two things actually match. So you can use the relative atomic mass and assume that it is the same as the mass of one mole. The main difference, of course, is that the mass of one mole is measured in grams and you can put it on a regular scale. So you can use it to um, you can use a regular or common measuring apparatus to measure the mass of it. So if you group atoms into units of mole, essentially you can link the mass of a substance, which is something that you can measure easily, to the number of atoms that are in that substance, because the number of atoms is not something that we could normally measure. So you, you can basically bridge the gap between the mass of something and the number of atoms or particles or ions in that thing using the mole concept. Okay, let's just let's just give you an example. So how many moles of carbon atoms would be in 24 grams of carbon? And how many atoms of carbon would that be? So I'm gonna start by summarizing the question again. So how many moles of carbon atoms? So I wanna know the number of mole of carbon that's my first unknown. My second unknown is I want to know the number of carbon atoms. So I want to use capital N of C. So I want to I want to find out these two. And I know that this particular sample has 24 grams of carbon. So you already know earlier that if you have one mole, one mole of carbon has the mass of 12 point zero zero grams. So 24 grams of carbon would be equivalent to two mole of C. So it means that the number of mole of carbon, which is the first unknown, is going to be two. Let's go three six fix, so two point zero zero. So this is the first unknown. And then from there, I should be able to work out the number of carbon atoms. So if we just go unknown of a given again, I know it's, it's, it's a bit ridiculous, but I'm just going to stick with one method is N of C over two. You don't have to do it though. Um, 6.02 times 10 to 23 
times 10 to the 23 over 1. So this is a conversion factor. And then from here, number of mole, sorry, number of carbon atom is 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And then you should get um, 1.204 times 10 to the 24 atoms. So that this is the answer. So you, this example is really here to illustrate that if you have the mass of one mole, you should be able to go from the mass of carbon to the number of carbon atoms. So if I if I have 24 grams of carbon, I can calculate exactly how many atoms of carbon is in that. Now there are there are a lot of um, there are reasons for for why I would want to do that, which we will explore in the future, but. Basically, once we use the mole concept, you could really um, go from mass to the number of atoms. Now, there are a few more, um, well, two more letters and symbols that we're going to use if you go back to this example. So basically, the first one is the idea of molar mass. Now, the mass of one mole of atoms of an element, this is way too long, too many words. So basically, we shorten that and we, we call it the molar mass. The symbol for molar mass is capital M. Unit is grams per mole. And this is a constant and it's unique for an element because it has the same value as the relative atomic mass. So the molar mass of carbon is 12 grams per mole. Or I can say capital M of C, molar mass of carbon, is 12 grams per mole. So that's the molar mass. The, the other concept or symbol that we need is the concept idea of mass. So mass is the actual mass of a sample. So if in the first example that we just did there, the mass of carbon was 24 grams. But I can have another sample of carbon that has a different mass. So molar mass, which is a constant, we use capital M. And actual mass, which is not a constant and fluctuates depending on the situation, we're going to use lowercase m. And the unit for um, lowercase m is grams, but obviously you can convert it to kilograms or tons or depending on how many um, atoms you have, I guess. So we're going to have two more symbols here, capital M and lowercase m. So we go back to my example. I could write um, this as, so the number of mole is basically 24 divided by 12 which is the mass of carbon divided by the molar mass of carbon. So once you have the concept of mass and molar mass, you can create another link between the number of mole and the mass. So if we go to this one, so you can, you can create another conversion factor. In this case, it's the conversion between mass and number of mole, and that's going to equal to molar mass over one. So for example, if we have carbon, the molar mass of carbon is 12 grams per mole. This means that the conversion between the mass of carbon and the molar mass, of, sorry, and the number of mole of carbon is going to be 12 over one. That is going to be the conversion factor between mass and number of mole. Or if I want to convert between number of mole and mass, I just need to take the reciprocal of this fraction. So it looks like that. Of course, you can translate this into a triangle as well. The reason why I don't normally use a triangle is just because um, it doesn't work for some cases. And I'm just trying to come up with one method that works all the time. I know the conversion factor seems overly complicated for some people, but there are cases when you kind of have to use it. So there's that. But this is going to be the triangle. So mass is on top. This is mass. In grams. This is molar mass, which is in grams per mole. And this is the number of mole. The thing about this topic is that because it has a lot of calculations in it, you, you just need to you know come up with a method that works for you. Just make sure that you actually understand it and it's not a fluke that you got the right answer. So you can use this triangle, just cover what you need to find and that will give you um, the, the formula that you need. Okay. 
Yeah, we'll talk about this. The molar mass is the same as a relative atomic mass, but it's measured in grams per mole. So you can actually find the molar mass of every element from the periodic table because it is going to have the same uh, number as the relative atomic mass. So for example, if we have gold, um, if you look at this in the periodic table, the relative atomic mass of gold is 197. Therefore, the molar mass of gold is going to be 197 grams per mole. So there's that. Um, what am I saying here? The molar mass of different elements will be different. Yes. Okay. I I know what I'm trying to say here. So um, what I'm trying to say is, if you have one mole of different element and different substances, they are not going to have the same mass. So this is one mole of carbon. To be fair, that should be zero. So one mole of carbon. So this has a 6.02 times 10 to 23. Um, atoms of carbon and the mass of it is around 12 grams but if you have one mole of sulfur which is around this much so it has the same number of atoms the mass of one mole of sulfur is going to be more than the mass of one mole of carbon simply because one atom of sulfur is heavier than one atom of carbon um, and then silicon is also going to be heavier than, than carbon so you can have the same number of mole or the same number of atoms but because different atoms have different mass their molar masses will be different as well okay let's try example six what is the mass of 0 0.275 mole of copper atoms so once again we're going to summarize the question what is the mass now copper is cu i'm just going to use the chemical formula. What is the mass? So we're trying to work out the actual mass, so lowercase m, of copper. That's my unknown. And I am given the number of mole of copper. So the number of mole of copper is given to be 0 0.275 mole. The other information that is not explicitly listed in the question that you can find out from the periodic table is the molar mass of copper. So you need to use a periodic table for these questions. The molar mass of copper is 63.5. So basically, I used the relative atomic mass, but um, the unit is a bit different, so it's grams per mole. OK, so from here, we're going to use the conversion factor again of unknown over given. So unknown, the unknown is, let's just write unknown over given. Again, you can do this without this. Um, the unknown is mass of copper, and the information given is the number of mole, which is 0 0.275 mole. So I'm going to use this conversion of 63.5 grams in one mole, which I get from the molar mass of copper. OK, and then from here, you can find the mass of copper, which is 0 0.275 times 63.5. So this is equal to 0.275 times 63.5 is 17.5. It will stick to three significant figures, grams. So this is the final answer. So that is example six. Moving on to example seven, how many moles of iron is in 50 grams of iron? Now, iron is a an element, so it's Fe. So once again, I'm going to start by summarizing the questions. How many moles of iron? So the number of mole of iron is my unknown here. And the information given is the mass of iron, which is 50 grams. And from the periodic table, you should also be able to work out the molar mass of iron, which is 55.8 grams per mole. So this is from the periodic table. Now, using this information, I'm going to go through a known of a given again. So a known of a given is going to be number of mole of Fe over 50.0 grams, which is the information given. So that's the mass. And the conversion factor that I'm using here is one mole in 55.8 grams. So this is this is basically from the molar mass of Fe. 
Now, if you just rearrange the fraction, you will get number of mole Fe equal to 50 grams divided by 55.8 grams. And the number of mole Fe is going to equal to, so 50 divided by 55.8, 0 0.896 to three significant figures, 0 0.896 mole. Okay. So just to extend our understanding of molar mass, if you know the molar mass of an element, you could also find the molar mass of a compound or a molecule. And essentially, the molar mass of a compound or molecule is just the sum of the molar masses of all the atoms present in the compound or molecule. So for example, if I want to find the molar mass of water, this is just going to be two times the molar mass of hydrogen plus the molar mass of oxygen because if you look at the formula there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in water and then from here you just use the periodic table again to find where the molar mass is so two times one plus 16 so the answer is 18 grams per mole which is why in my first example, well, first, fourth example, one mole of water is around 18 grams because that's the mass of, that's the molar mass of water. Um, similarly, if you have molar mass of an iron, it is the same as the molar mass of the neutral atom because an iron essentially has gained or lost um, a few electrons, but the mass of electrons are so small that you just not, like, it's not going to be that significant. So the molar mass of, let's say, for example, aluminium, and the molar mass of aluminium iron, so IEL3+, plus, so this one has lost three electrons, um, it, they will, these two molar masses will be equal to each other and both equal to 27 grams per mole, which you get from the periodic table. If I have a polyatomic iron, say SO3, uh, what's a good one, MnO4-, minus, for example, ooh, Mn. O4 minus, so permanganate. So this is a polyatomic iron. If you need to find the molar mass of this, it's just going to be the molar mass of manganese, or Mn, plus four times the molar mass of oxygen. So manganese is 54.9 from the periodic table, and four times 16, and then you should be able to work this out as 108. I think I might have made that up. Let me just do it in the calculator. No, that's right. Grams per mole. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So that's that. So example H, you should be able to do fairly easily. So first one molar mass of, um, this is sucrose for anyone who um, can recognize it. Do the bio people know that this is sucrose? Okay, so the molar mass of this, maybe I, I don't need to write the formula because it's just the same thing. So it's just 12 times the molar mass of carbon plus 22 times the molar mass of hydrogen. I really should, okay, plus 11 times the molar mass of oxygen. So I think I need to create more room here. Okay, so 12 times 12, molar mass of carbon is 12, 22 times 1 and 11 times 16. So we're going to have 144 plus 22 plus 176, which is 342 grams per mole. So that's A. There's a 2 here. For part B, the molar mass is going to be, so molar mass of carbon plus 2 times the molar mass of hydrogen plus 2 times the molar mass of chlorine. Okay. So we have 12 plus 12 times 1, sorry, 2 times 1, and 2 times 35.5. So 14 plus 71 is, what, 85 grams per mole. Is that right? Like, I do this every time. Like, I did the calculation in my head, I'm like, oh, it must be wrong. And then I did it again in the calculator. So just to check. <laughs> Trust me, I've made a lot of silly mistakes with calculations before just because I, I can do this in my head and then I did the weirdest thing like 1 plus 1 equal to 3 or something so sulfur is 32.1 4 plus oxygen so 4 times 16 
98.1 I think I made that up 96.1 sorry 96.1 just use a calculator um 32 32 it is is it 32.1 yeah I remember it correctly 32.1 plus 64 yeah that, that was right that was right wow reassuring okay this one aluminium sulfate so two times now obviously you can skip this step two times the and then three times the molar mass of sulfur and four times oxygen oh sorry molar mass of oxygen so you have two times 27 plus three times 32 plus 4 times 16 and then whatever is the answer so what what is this 54 plus 3 times 32 plus 64 so hip really oh 332 42 again how magical so you can see that um, compounds and molecules can have the same um, molar mass, even if they made up different things. That's just a coincidence. Either that or I have made a calculation error. I don't know which one, but I'm just going to assume I didn't. 32.1. So, okay, 32.1. So, 342.1 if, um, you know, if you, if you write it to 3 sig fig, it's just 342. Okay, example 9. What is the mass of this many molecules of water? So, once again, let's go through what is the mass. So, we need to find the mass. So lowercase m of H2O, and you are given the amount of molecules. So capital N of H2O is 3.45 times 10 to the 25, that's 5 molecules. That's a lot. This is going to be heavy. Okay, so if you think about the conversion, in order to find the mass, you actually need to find the number of mole. There is also two other pieces of information that is not explicitly given in the question, but you can work out yourself, and that is the molar mass of water, which you can work out using the periodic table. It's going to come out to be 18 grams per mole, and Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Okay. So... What I'm going to do, because I want to find the mass, so I'm, I'm going to need the number of moles. So I think that's going to be my step one, is to find the number of mole of H2O. Um, so the unknown, my first unknown is going to be number of mole of H2O. Um, I already have the number of molecules, which is 3.45 times 10 to the 25. And then that is going to... It will use the conversion factor, which is Avogadro's constant, 1 on 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So one mole has this many molecules. We need to find the number of mole in this many molecules. So the number of mole of H2O is going to be 3.45 times 10 to the 25. This is a massive number. This is very unusual. Normally it's not. <laughs> I say that. I wrote the question. Um, I can't remember why I decided on this, but anyway, so 3.45 times 10 to the 25, it doesn't matter, uh, divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, so we have 57.3 mole. Try to use the exact answer in the calculator rather than the routed answer. So I'm, even though I wrote 57.3 here, I'm actually going to use the answer with all the decimal places in the calculator. So for the second step, once I found the number of mole, I should be able to find the mass. So the mass of water in 57.3 mole is going to equal to um, 18 grams in one mole. This is the conversion factor, which is also the molar mass of water. And then you rearrange, you have mass of H2O is 57.3 times 18. So the answer is 1031. So if you write using scientific notation, 1.03 times 10 to the 3 grams. So you can have three significant figures. 
So this is example 9. Do I have example 10? Yes, example 10. Okay, there's something weird there. How many more of hydrogen? Oh, no, no. Actually, example 10 is the next video. So example 9 is the end of this video.